Good morning, welcome back to the vlog. It is a Sunday, it is 9.28 in the morning and uh, today we're gonna see Ryan Fricker or Bobby. I've got a bit of tuning up to do before a tournament this week. I've got my PGA National Finals at Bowood in Wiltshire, which I've played before a few times. I uh, played it on the channel as well. So we're gonna try a slightly different style a video today instead of showing bits and pieces i'm going to show everything so we're going to go throughout the day and if you are a fan of this content make sure you let me know in the comments because for me just getting the camera on and just talking through different points of the day is really easy and it's really easy to edit so i can do it quite a lot and this week i've got a lot of interesting stuff coming up because i've got my bow with things so i can literally do a vlog every day we can make it entertaining we can still make it valuable so i can show you what i'm learning with ryan show you some cool stuff so it is going to be like 28 degrees today 28 degrees i've got green shorts and all cool. i know you're thinking why are you filming while you're driving but i am going four miles an hour oh. just pulling into the gates at bobby look how look how good it looks God. Here we have one of the workers. Yeah. Hello? You can't do that. What? No, stop it. You in the vlog? I don't consent. <laughs> right, we're here. It's the golf car park. And it is a water day. Uh, I think what we're gonna do is um, go down, I've got to look for Ryan, see what he's doing. So usually like, the way it happens, the way it happens, the way this works, he works out here like four or five days a week. And then the days he's working, I come out and I'll see him He'll come down for like half an hour, we'll go through some stuff, then he'll be busy doing other stuff, maybe lessons, maybe working in the shop, and then like keep popping down, which which is great, because I can spend like five, six hours here, and he'll pop down every now and again just to make sure that I'm working on the right things and I've got someone to basically watch me practice properly. So it's, it is, it's massive, rather than just, you know, going for an hour lesson and then working on it yourself and, not being like 100% sure if you're like working on the right thing, but this means that I'm on track the whole day, so it's it's class. I've got to show you the um, got to show you the hotel as well. It's uh, yeah, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. You got to be uh, in a different bracket, in a different bracket to um, stay here. I think it's like 400 pound a night minimum, and it goes up from there. So uh, slightly out of the price range at the moment. Now. Right. What? I'm right on film. What? I'm right on film. Straight mate. away, yeah. <laughs> Straight on the spot, mate. I didn't sign up for this. How's it going? <laughs> Good, mate. How are right? you? Yeah. Right, it's been having a chat with Ryan. And the main thing we got from that was you need to plan your practice days better. So, what I've done is put together, so what I've done is put together a little practice schedule for today. Start on putt and then short game, then long game, work your way up. If you start on long game, sometimes you feel like, ooh, afterwards, if you start on short game, obviously you've still got the energy to put some good work in on the long game. He also said that doing this for five minutes at the start of a session means that the session is just gonna be way more beneficial. It's like going to a gym. You wouldn't usually go to a gym without a plan. And if you do, it's a shit workout. It takes longer than it needs to. Go there with like a precise plan, what you're gonna do. Um, so we put something together. All right, drill one just done, 15 minutes. So this is what we've got little station just make sure I'm getting the part in the center of the face with the T's then the main thing just got an alignment rod parallel and I uh, got this club down to represent where the club head where the part of face is gonna be so I want the part of face in the middle so and then the other thing that I always have to um, work on is head position because I have a tendency to tilt my head big time to the right which obviously distorts your eye line. So we're trying to get it completely centered. Now for me, it feels like really weird. It's the same in the long game as well. So it's a bit of a work in progress, but when I'm practicing, I've got to make sure I do it like perf perfect. Checkups. Right, next up, start line drill. This is simple. Um, if you've got a chalk line, get a chalk line down. Just set some T's just wide enough so the ball can go through. Um, and then just make sure you getting it through. Quite simple. Half three. Third. The saw grass on gear one. Every time I come and see Ryan, you're like, 
tell me something new that would be like, where, where did you get that from? But I guess that's what you get. If you're a coach who's like heavily invested in, you know, continuing the learning process and not just getting by, getting a qualification, then going teaching everyone a, a method or some shit like that, which you see a lot. What a lovely backdrop we have. That's what MJ was trying to argue. But uh, it didn't go down that well in court, unfortunately. I told him about recent golf and it's definitely clear that I've slipped back into score focus rather than process focus, which is the thing that I've gone about all the time. But the thing is, if you get, when you're trying to move towards something, and make the changes that you need to make. If you're too score focused, you're going to be less inclined to take on changes which are gonna be beneficial in the long term, which means you're just gonna get really caught up doing, well, it's just gonna be a slower process because you're gonna keep wanting to go back to what feels comfortable for the sake of a score. But then he says, how important is the score right now? I said, well, it's quite important and that's really like the wrong answer. Like the score isn't the thing that's important right at the moment the thing that's more important is continuing with this process doing the things we need to do and in the end you get to a point where and you get there quicker where you need to be and you're shooting the scores obviously that is the goal long term but like not short term dispersion percentage is five percent on the pj tool so it's giving me a little drill to do right so if you stand like this fingers up four fingers flag through the middle finger and then each side is your dispersion edge, right? And obviously that extends due to this focal point and the distance math stuff. So I said, look, like if we did like my dispersion throughout the bag, I would feel pretty comfortable with wedges into mid irons going towards long irons. I feel pretty comfortable um, getting in those dispersion points, but with driver, especially at the moment, my, my dispersion percentage would be like no way near and he said that I'm probably at the moment especially as there's new feels like trying to hit driver too hard and it was a bit like a, a wake-up call because I probably am like with irons wedges like percentage feel I'm way within what feels like my upper power potential so with like wedge to seven iron I literally feel like that's why I always say I'm hitting a little one for me it does that's what it feels like. I'm swinging like 70%. But with driver, I go way past that and get like near 100%. And then he gave me an analogy and I wish I could like record this stuff. And I know he's watching at home as well. It's probably quite funny to hear me say what he just said. He said that me and him, like power potential would be right up there with, you know, like racing cars, right? So in the grand scheme of like everyone playing golf, if you're swinging like 125 mile an hour, you're up in the top echelon of like club and speed potential obviously without going on about like Berkshire all that and he said where do you think your skill level is in relationship to to that like you know a Nissan Micra to a Formula 1 car and I would say somewhere in the middle so I'm someone in the middle trying to drive a Formula 1 car obviously you're going to crash quite a bit if someone just passed a test got in a Formula 1 car they will crash every 50 yards Someone that's at the top level swinging it hard, like Victor Hovland, for instance, looks like he's just going at it. Bryson, DJ sort of like keeps quite a bit within him. But the long guys on tour, they are Formula One drivers driving Formula One cars. I'm sort of middle ground driving a Formula One car, so I just need to taper it down a bit until it gets, you know, until your skill level like moves up a bit and then you can start going at it a bit harder. Here he is, the coach, with my new club. I'll show you in a minute. Let's get some ball flight action for you. <laughs> I 
They're gonna like that one, mate. They're gonna be. Uh, our mate will be f all over that setup, the won't he? The king. <laughs> the king. Where you at, King Shark? <laughs> So before we get into that club, this is the station that I got up. So this is the spot. Um, just did the, so four fingers flag in the middle, and then you can get the wide point. So the ball and the stick, and obviously gets wider the further it goes. And then I've just hit literally four balls, sorry, five balls of each club. Um, the target was eight, but it's now four o'clock, oh, past four o'clock opens on, and it's 28 degrees. Um, but yeah, the thing is, either left miss, good, or right miss. So wedges majority missing left, drivers majority missing right, but quite a lot of good ones in there as well. And that is properly constructive practice. So knowing exactly, uh, so basically getting to know your shot pattern. Um, having things down written down rather than just going to a range oh, I think I'm you know I think I'm doing this think I'm doing that like actually taking some time to test it and see where you're at because that is PJ tour average 5% of each club this is the new hybrid so this is the Cobra King Tech um, I've got it in so the standard as 19 it's come through as de-lofted, I might have asked them for that, but I'm probably gonna... I'm gonna need to give it a little... Uh, yeah, it needs a it needs a proper little wipe, but this is really nice to look down on. Let me just show you. Especially if it's cleaner. But this is exactly what you want, nice compact. Good looking head. So I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna go through my bag exactly in one of the next videos. But this will replace the three iron. Um, and provide a lot more utility where I need it. So, force in the bag, come in next video. We're going to do that for the practice round for Bowood.